review for Transformers 4 Age of Extinction Evasion Mode Optimus Prime, which, as you will notice, is a standard G1-esque looking Optimus Prime cab, with red with the silver stripes and the blue back and the flat nose cab, and hooray! Even though in the movie he's actually like a rusted white cab with flames. Um, but it happened! So I guess, yay, for everybody wondering. Um, he does come around with Megatron's shotgun from Dark of the Moon, which he is apparently still carrying around, uh, just taking people's faces and uh, getting Titus well over on his butt. Um, it does have a couple tabs here on the back. I, I don't think I have my Dark of the Moon Megatron anymore, the Voyager. Um, I think that ended up going into a giant bin of goodwill donations a while back. But uh, aside from being able to be held by Optimus by this peg, he does have a couple of little tabs on either side of the shotgun so that uh, you can use it with Dark of the Moon Voyager Megatron, which is kind of nice. Um, in vehicle mode, it can plug in right here on top. And uh, I think we can both agree that that is uh, kind of ridiculous. Anyway, but it's there. It's got a trailer hitch. You can plug it in. No, you can't. I guess you can plug it in backwards into the bottom of his foot if you want to just have him towing it. Just towing it. Anyway, sorry, that's an Archer reference. Um, but yeah, um, and the thing is, like, the cab mode looks okay. It works better if you look at it from the side, because here you can kind of see the red, but it looks like a flat-nosed cab. If you look at it from the front, the windows are really weird, because at first I thought it was all off, and it turns out that, like, when all this is plugged in correctly, the actual silver lining around the windows is lines up pretty well, but because there's, like, a little bit of red that comes down past the silver lining up here and then a clear bit in the middle. It just looks weird. You can kind of see all the puzzly pieces together on the front of the cab. It's not bad. Like I said, it's just a vroom, 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 vroom. It's a lot of fun. Um, and it's a nice little G1 cab. Also weird at first was that it has only one smokestack that folds down, which uh, was odd to me because the these are the two parts of the arm which are symmetrical. There's no reason they couldn't have put one over here. Um, but I just looked at all the... Uh, all this production stills of him when he's in the flat nose rusted out cab online, and he's only got one smokestack over here because if you look at it, the smokestack on his rusted out version has like rusted and fallen off. Like he does not have it in the movie, so eh, I would have liked it if they if they'd stuck one over here. But seeing as how it matches, even though the color doesn't match, the, the vehicle mode physically matches uh, what he is in in the movie with the missing smokestack. So uh, I'll I'll forgive it. Um, his packaging just like Grimlock is uh, this giant white transformer call-out packaging with, uh, again, not exactly, even this red and blue on his evasion mode is richer than it looks in the movie. It's very, very faded and rusty in the movie, but um, it's closer to what he... It looks more like this all over, which is some kind of hints of the flames in in the whitish, dirty, rusty than, than this vibrant blue and, blue and red. But, um, but again, uh, I'm sure they went to appeal. Now, it would have been much nicer had they painted it up like this, but we'll get to that in robot mode. Um, hey, and there's the bio on the back and all that good stuff. So, transformation. And this is where it gets a little crazy on this guy, because uh, you think, oh, Optimus, there's his legs, and oh, look, there's his feet. Yeah, okay, that's, that's an Optimus, there's his legs. Here's his cab body. Great. Uh, I know how this is going to work. And if you do, then you're smart, because it, it's not how it works. <laughs> so, yeah. So, transform this. you got to come back around here. You fold. Go ahead and fold that down. That can happen really any time when you're messing the arms. I go ahead and start off with that just to get it out of the way. Focus again, just make sure. Um, and then you got to come out here. And you come under here and you lift up right in there. You just lift up the whole front section. Oh, look, there he is, his head upside down in front of the cap. So you lift this up. And then this, this whole piece in the front, you untab it from the sides here. And this whole piece comes down. And you basically just kind of open up the whole front of the cab like that. And then this piece flips up. Should flip up. There we go. Un unpack it there. So pull these out a little bit. Flip this up. Pull these panels out a little bit. And then you've got to unpeg. You've got to flip these up. And then this whole panel, once you get these, you pull these forward. And this whole panel kind of comes around. And once it's out, you got to... Finagling all this stuff around each other is a little difficult. And get this down and bring this down out like that. So you just kind of finagle it. You kind of pull it down, flip this, pull this out a little bit, and while you're doing that, twist this down, 
till it clearances and you open it up like that. So now you've got like this exploded bit right here. And the head, go ahead and straighten the legs down like this. This piece, you flip this up and that's going to form the smokestacks on his shoulders. Uh, this piece comes down here. I'll fold this down. This whole assembly comes up around back and then like there's a hole right here there's like an opening between this hinge and the back of uh, this piece goes through that so you fold that around so it comes out right through there fold that down around like that there's his head fold these panels up there's a little tab here this doesn't lock it but that's where it fits there's a tab here that goes into this slot right here on the side on both sides and then once that's done you take these panels on the that were on the back of the car flip them up and that folds in to form the chest. And the arms come down. Uh, these panels right here uh, fold down onto his back. And then they split the legs apart and the foot, the whole lower shin rotates to bring the foot down. And then the foot just rotates up. And then these little knee pads come out. And there is Prime in robot mode. Now you'll see here, you rotate him up here at the bicep and his fists are this way, um, which again, kind of gives him gorilla arms, but the fists are rotatable, so you can rotate your arms around like this. And th these are kind of stiff. I found the easiest way to rotate the fist is just to take the gun, stick it in one of the fists and rotate it on both sides. And that, and that get, brings the, uh, the panel into the bottom and gives him slightly more uh, useful elbows right here, which do swing around this window. But entirely up to you. And again, he's very poseable, his head, and the thing is, like, there's a lot of detail here, like, really nice detail, too, that uh, gets kind of lost in the paint. Now, let's see what we do with this. His, uh, his gun does fire a missile. I forgot to show that off earlier, but there is a missile in the shotgun. But let's see if I can get up here on his face. Um, it's actually a really nice, when you look at it, head sculpt of Optimus Prime minus his faceplate. But because of this, the way they painted it silver, or at least I guess molded it in the silver plastic, a lot of that detail gets lost unless you're getting right up on it. It's actually looking pretty good here on the, on the camera when I'm looking at the screen. So yeah, it's a really neat sculpt. It's just from far away, it just looks messy. Um, and like you can see, when you get up close, it's actually pretty decent. Um, but you see, it's a lot of red and blue and gray, and that's about it. There's not a whole lot of paint on this, aside from like some silver here and around the windows and the stripe. I, th I think so, there is some blue paint on like the head and the fist, but still, like very limited colors. Whereas if you look at, uh, look here on, on the box art, you can see he's got red upper arms with some gray in between there, and it makes the arms look a lot more dynamic. Um, and, and as well as some more paint here on the chest, some different stripe, you know, some stripes to outline this, and uh, and then, and then when you get it, when you get it here, a lot of that is missing. Um, he's just got these solid blue upper arms, and it does because it doesn't pick out the shoulder pads. Again, a lot of the detail of the sculpted shoulder pads up here, which aren't movable, uh, gets lost in just that solid blue plastic, um, which is a little bit of a disappointment. But he looks really cool when you actually have him in hand, and, and, when you, and you can look at him. All the detail looks really, really cool. There's a lot of neat stuff going on in here, but then the paint job just kind of hides a lot of it, and it's disappointing because, it, like I said, a, a better paint job would have made this figure look a lot better. I know they're releasing a version with, in a two-pack with Grimlock with some chrome, and that head has a faceplate on it, um, and I may nab that version just to swap a few parts out. There's also a Japanese version that, again, we've seen some mock-up shots, but, I, again, I don't know how much paint, how much of that is going to make it onto the figure, so I'm curious to see how, how that one turns out. I had a point that I was going to go into, and now I completely forgot it. But yeah, posability-wise, he's got a lot of motion here in the shoulders. Um, he's got the, the swivel, the elbow joint, the wrist swivel. Um, he does have a waist swivel. His head is on a ball joint. Uh, it's slightly limited by the, the underlying neck piece, but he can look down, he can look up, he can look side to side. Um, hip swivels both ways. He does have a very, there is a thigh swivel right there. It's very tight, so the first couple times you may not think it's there, but there is a thigh swivel there. Uh, hinged knees, uh, hinged uh, ankles right here, and he does have, like, it rotates this way, and he does get some ankle tilt there, 
Uh, not much, so much on the inside because of the way the joint is connected, but there is there is some ankle tilt uh, on his thing. These these wheels rotate, you know, so if you get him in a wide stance pose, the wheel will move out of the way for that. Um, so yeah, all in all, like design-wise, it's an excellent figure. I think the colors and paint apps could have been laid out a little better on him to make him a more dynamic and more interesting uh, figure, especially for your shelf. Um, transformation is insane and a lot different than what we've seen from a, uh, an Optimus in the movie line. And I love the way, like, the G1, the cab is very G1-esque and about the size of the G1 cab. My wife actually saw that when I was playing with him today. I had him in cab mode and she's like, that's not a movie toy. And I'm like, yeah, it is, because she thought it was the old old G1 Optimus. So there's that. And, and again, in my house, my wife is not ignorant of what Transformers look like. <laughs> um, here he is with Bumblebee, or Murder Bee, as we all affectionately dubbed him. Uh, and the Deluxes this time around are a little smaller, too. So it looks like, oh, he's about the uh, slightly bigger than a Deluxe, but like Bumblebee from this movie is only about like this tall. They're much smaller. Um, and I guess I'll find that out uh, in a couple of days when I meet some friends from Canada. But yeah, uh, Evasion Mode Optimus Prime, he's actually pretty cool. Um, like I said, there's a neat, there's a lot of neat stuff going on. I wish they painted him better. That's really my bottom line. The figure itself is a lot of fun with some really, really neat transformation bits um, and a nice representation of Optimus. And I love his G1, you know, very G1-esque cab mode uh, or alt mode. Uh, I just wish that there were more, uh, like I said, I just wish he looked more dynamic uh, in robot mode. Now, like At the very least, I would have been happy if, if there had been like some red or some, at least some gray on the upper arms. But uh, but this is what we got. Uh it's not bad. Like I said, the, the figure itself is quite fun. I just wish it were painted better. But there it is. Uh, Transformers 4 Age of Extinction Evasion Mode Optimus Prime.